Good afternoon and welcome to Phoenix podcast. My name is Tamara Vrhoj-Sekac and I'm International Business Expansion Manager for Phoenix. And my guest today is Tony Vitali, Croatian Swedish financial blogger. <laughs> Tony, hi. Uh, hi, Tamara. Uh, nice, to, nice to be here. We've done a lot of uh, webinars and podcasts uh, in the Croatian language for the Croatian audience. So it's nice to do one in English as well. Thanks for joining me. Uh, it's, I'm really glad to have you here. As you said, uh, we've done uh, so many <laughs> uh, other webinars and podcasts, but today as uh, we are growing our uh, international audience, uh, I invited you here to um, make an interesting podcast uh, regarding five biggest mistakes people make with uh, their money. I think it's a good subject to discuss at the beginning of the year. Yeah, most definitely. And um, as I like to say, finances are very, very similar uh, across different countries. So there's only a couple of differences from country to country regarding, you know, uh, taxation, the retirement system. But uh, like this basic stuff that, that we usually talk about, I think it's uh, applicable uh, regardless of uh, where you live. I think mostly what we will discuss today is exactly uh, creating new habits and healthy habits, which lead us to healthier finances. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it's the time of uh, New Year's uh, resolutions, so uh, it's a perfect opportunity to get a fresh start, uh, to, to change certain behaviors. Uh, but we have to uh, also be aware that uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, we have to start you now slowly, uh, step by step. but. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think um, these five uh, common uh, financial mistakes that people make are, are, I think, a good starting point. We mentioned uh, um, that, uh, let's say, when we discuss uh, the first mistake that people very often make, especially um, maybe at the beginning of their life or career when they don't earn as much money, um, is that they live from salary to salary, from paycheck to paycheck. What can we do? To change that well we, we can do a lot uh, to change it i mean we, we have to be aware that um, there are two sides uh, to that uh, personal cash flow <laughs> equation let's uh, let's call it like that so we have the the income and uh, uh, we had the expenses uh, on the other side so uh, of course we can work when, with both definitely <laughs> yeah yeah most definitely we, we can work with both uh, I mean, uh, to, to raise one's income, uh, yeah, we have to work on our uh, skills, on our education, uh, uh, at our job or as entrepreneurs, uh, etc. And uh, that's a little bit more of a, of a long term approach to, to improving uh, our finances. But uh, I would say that um, maybe uh, for a lot of people, it's uh, even the, the more important one. Uh, so yeah, we have to honestly look at our finances and see uh, what is what is the bigger problem, the the income or the expenses. But uh, ideally, we want to work on the on the both sides uh, of it. So um, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the number one mistake that people make is living uh, from paycheck to paycheck. And uh, to be honest, we see this uh, at different income levels as well. So we see it at, with people with uh, low incomes, middle incomes, very high incomes. Uh, so. As, as we like to say, it's not only important to uh, live uh, inside of your financial means, but below your financial means. So um, you have to uh, save at least uh, a small percentage of your uh, income every month, uh, ideally. In order to do that, uh, first of all, I think you have to look at your personal budget or your family budget if you uh, live in a bigger household. Um, as you said, we have to look at the expenses and we have to look at the income. And uh, the math is a very exact science. So the numbers need to be within their limitations, as we say, financial limitations. So um, basically what we are saying here is that everyone should uh, sit down and uh, try to somehow um, maybe write their expenses and uh, try to follow what's going on for a few months, whether through the application that uh, they can obtain uh, online. There are many free uh, applications. Even Phoenix has one for personal finances called FinBot, um, which will definitely help us 
um, you know, uh, not to go through Excel files or through to write in a notebook. But yeah, some people might prefer that. Um, maybe it's not a very fun process, but when the app does it for you, you don't really waste any time on that. And uh, by the end of the month, you can really see what's going on. Um, we need to mention here that definitely we have to think of uh, some one-off payments, right? Uh, like some bigger insurances and you know car registrations and stuff that we know are happening every year, maybe not every month, but every year, and try to also calculate that uh, when uh, creating our budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, yes. go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I just w wanted to, yeah, to, to double down on, on what you said. Um, it's important to, to track expenses. And uh, from my experience uh, working with people, I would say the uh, the best method for tracking your expenses is the one that uh, uh, you're gonna uh, you're gonna keep doing for an extended period of time. So uh, there's a very small percentage of people that are uh, gonna write all their uh, expenses in a small notebook or uh, or even in an Excel sheet. But uh, today, uh, fortunately, we have uh, free applications that that we can use. Uh, some of them automatically even categorize our expenses. So. I would say like the automation in this area is desirable and uh, yeah we have to know uh, both sides of the equation as we said uh, from the start uh, most of us know uh, how much uh, money we make uh, every month uh, except maybe uh, entrepreneurs where where it varies but still we at least have an have a really good estimate but uh, i would say a lot of people uh, don't know their expenses so uh, it's important both for the the saving part for all the the financial goals we have but also like to, to plan your finances uh, in general uh, we have to know how much money is flowing in and how much money is flowing out which leads us to our second point uh, the one that we discuss is basically integrated in this first one they are very much uh, related uh, one uh, to the other is that we basically often don't know what we are spending our money on and uh, definitely creating a budget will uh, give us a very good perspective of where our money goes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, we have to first look maybe at uh, the three big um, uh, components of, of everybody's expenses. And those are uh, housing, uh, transportation and food. And that's where the majority of the money uh, goes to for uh, the majority of people. But um, also, on, on the other hand, uh, those are the categories that are uh, perhaps the least flexible. So it's not that easy to change where you live, how much do you pay for your uh, uh, loan or rent uh, and uh, how much do you have to travel to get to work, etc. So uh, if we cannot make improvements in those uh, categories, I would say maybe even more important ones are uh, some uh, reoccurring expenses. So we know today that you know a lot of companies are based on a subscription uh, uh, model so there's a lot of su subscriptions we are we are paying for stuff that uh, we uh, we do need and for the stuff that maybe we can live uh, without uh, so i would say for most people those recurring expenses um, are maybe a good starting point to look at uh, how can we optimize them we can cancel Internet some of plans, them mobile plans and yeah. Mobile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not saying we should live without internet, but uh, I think it uh, pays really well just to, to make a single phone call. Like, from my experience, I think I, I saved a lot of money in the last couple of years just uh, making one or two phone calls to my internet provider or mobile provider. And uh, yeah, just saying, uh, you know, uh, to negotiate about the price, uh, it's much, much easier than... But you're uh, moving to the competition. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's that's the easiest. Uh, I don't have any great uh, negotiation skills, but uh, <laughs> if I could do it, anybody can do it. So yeah, I would say those reoccurring expenses uh, are the maybe the first thing to look at. The third point uh, that we want to mention is definitely inflation of a lifestyle. I think we have all encountered that sometimes in our life or more often or some of us always whenever we start uh, earning more <laughs> yeah for sure uh, lifestyle inflation is very uh, easy to creep in um i think we, we talked about this uh, in the in the creation version of, of this podcast and some other webinars that for me personally avoiding lifestyle inflation was uh, the best financial decision i ever made um because i think it's it's very important because uh, most of us when we go through life uh, you know from uh, our schooling then starting to work and then uh, improving at whatever profession we're in we're gonna 
almost inevitably start making more uh, money uh, as we go, as uh, our experience and, and skill set uh, is growing. But we also have to be aware of the expenses. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, some uh, different situations in life demand more money, such as you know, starting a family, maybe uh, buying your uh, your real estate, uh, etc. But uh, for some stuff, we have much more control over, so it's easy to fall into that trap. Uh, if I, for instance, get a get a ten percent raise, uh, let's say uh, next year, or I get a bonus, uh, it's easy to fall in the trap of uh, spending the whole raise or spending the whole bonus. So. I would say a, maybe a good um, maybe a good shortcut is uh, just to give yourself some constraints in that area. For instance, okay, I can spend half uh, of my raise or half of my bonus, and I will save the rest or invest it for the future. I think a very important thing that you mentioned here, and we also discussed it in a previous podcast, so, uh, is actually setting goals. Because you mentioned here goals, you know, in a way that yes, eventually, you know, one day. Uh, you're starting a family or um, having some other changes in your lifestyle, let's put it this way. And uh, we can predict these things, right? We, we know that they are going to happen. We know that one day we are going to, uh, you know, probably uh, be retired. Yeah. And we want to retire. And uh, this is everything that we already know and that we should use when setting our long term goals. And when we start thinking about it early, then there is a really high chance that we can do it in, in a, I would say, a quality way. You know, uh, once we really want to retire, that we will accomplish the goal that we want to accomplish because we know that when we have a long time period in front of us, uh, money wise, uh, you know. Uh, we can do uh, many things. And uh, usually if we invest, um, the compound interest and everything will help us with our goals. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, goal setting, I think, is beneficial in our personal lives in general, not just in finances. And it uh, intertwines with uh, all these uh, common mistakes that we are talking about uh, today. So um, also, I'm a big fan of uh, tracking things, you know, uh, the sheer numbers, the data, because uh, as we said, numbers, numbers don't lie. Uh, so yeah there, there's also a good saying what gets tracked uh, uh, gets improved so i think that that's a very um very good thing to, to have in your personal finances just to as you said tr track your expenses uh, not inflate uh, your lifestyle uh, etc so yeah I, I would say those are good starting points and well as we said you know it's a lot about uh, creating and uh, um, in a way creating new habits and uh, learning uh, how to go on the way and basically um, once we train ourselves uh, well enough um, it's going to become unconscious you know at first we have to consciously track what we are doing and think about the mistakes that we are often making but uh, as we go on um, if we start thinking about that that we can uh, do a lot to improve um, our financial status and uh, generally make uh, less mistakes, which uh, leads me to the fourth point, which we also mentioned a little bit now. It's uh, not not investing. So um, people are basically running from one day to another or from month to month, not thinking about the future, not thinking what to do with the money. Eventually, when they start saving it, if we know, if we just save money and put it on a bank account, we basically uh, devalue it in the long run because we know that it's going to lose on the value. Uh, and um, it's been very visible, especially in the last couple of years, people started to, to feel more disinflation. And I think uh, it's one of the terms that everyone learned in the past two years. So um, investing is something uh, that is basically very one of the very important goals that we need to set as well. yeah for sure i mean uh, we can all see in our personal lives uh, probably a lot of uh, hard working people that uh, are also uh, very much aware of the importance of, of saving money but on the other hand uh, they don't invest the money they save they play it very safe and uh, it's a little bit ironic that playing it very safe is not safe at all uh, in the end uh, 
uh, as you mentioned. Uh, there is only one result that you're going to get, and it would be shown in red if it was investing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we are 100% uh, sure that all the money that uh, we keep uninvested, that, that is going to lose value on inflation. And uh, yeah, we cannot avoid it uh, unless we start investing. So um, I would say if I said that for me personally, the uh, avoiding the lifestyle inflation was the most important uh, decision. The second one was uh, starting with investing. And uh, as you mentioned at, at the start of the podcast uh, with investing, uh, we have to be patient. Uh, we are talking about uh, long term investing, the power of the compound interest, which only shows um, after uh, cent- certain longer periods, periods of time. So, yeah, of course, it's better to, to start uh, sooner than later. But uh, for uh, uh, most of us, we cannot control the past uh, unless we invent a time machine. So we have to focus on where we are at now and uh, what can we do to, to improve our finances and to start investing from, from today onwards. This is a very important uh, thing, I think, to stress on that some things basically take time. So if we haven't invested until now, we cannot expect that uh, over a few days or months, we are going to catch up on what we've uh, in a way missed on. But uh, we have to be careful exactly once we start that we know how to invest, right? So we need to put on one side our short-term goals and money that we might need in, over the shorter period of time, which is like financial reserve and stuff like that. And then long-term goals like, uh, for example, thinking about pension and um, uh, maybe some goals for your children or uh, for buying a new apartment or a house one day. Those are all long-term goals. So it's very important that we know how to basically strategically uh, look after our money uh, when it comes to the dynamics of investing uh, in order you know, not to make uh, some crucial mistakes. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things that are uh, worth mentioning again is the the financial reserve the, that you mentioned just now. I mean, that's the that's the starting point, uh, or I would say that's the prerequisite for investing. We should always have a financial reserve in place so of at least a couple of months of living expenses, ideally three three to six months before we start investing. Um, but then, then again, uh, yeah, we stressed how important it is uh, with uh, everything uh, above that sum to to start planning uh, for the future and uh, uh, to start uh, putting it into some uh, um, some forms of in- investment that can benefit us long term. And we have to be aware that uh, today is the is the best uh, era uh, to start investing in. We're living in a, in a digital age. Uh, all the barriers uh, to investing are. Uh, very much lower than they were only a couple of years or or a couple of decades ago. So it's very easy to start investing today, even with uh, a couple dozen uh, euros, literally. Basically, yes, there is no more excuses to to Mm. place your money internationally and to invest, uh, I would say, very efficiently. Um, Which leads me uh, to our fifth point, uh, which we definitely didn't want to... uh, miss on this list and uh, it's actually not preparing uh, ourselves for the pension and for um, our later years. I think it's uh, one of the big mistakes. uh, Maybe the generations before us were doing because the systems were in a way different. But uh, nowadays it is crucial that we really take uh, this into our hands uh, as soon as possible. So uh, I would say uh, even for the ones who are maybe uh, teenagers now or in their 20s and they're listening to us and watching us, uh, uh, it would be a good idea for them to start thinking uh, as soon as possible because uh, even those small amounts uh, on such a long run can make a big difference. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, we don't want to uh, induce fear uh, in anyone, but uh, it's uh, it's a fact that uh, uh, retirement systems uh, all across uh, Europe and other uh, developed countries are not in a good shape. Uh, uh, the demographic movements are not favorable uh, for it. So today, uh, ma- majority of the countries uh, offer uh, pensions that are in range uh, about uh, one half of, of the salary that, that you made before the retirement uh, in some countries even 
or even significantly <laughs> less. <countries. laughs> yeah, yeah, some countries even one third. So we have to be aware that um, it's not looking good, um, that the retirement systems are very much stretched uh, in most countries and that it is our own responsibility uh, in the end to increase our retirement. So uh, we shouldn't fear that there will be uh, no pension when we retire, but it's probably not going to be enough to cover even our basic expenses, uh, let alone to um, ha give us an opportunity to live the, the life uh, that we want to live. So we have to start uh, preparing for the retirement better uh, sooner than later. And even with uh, smaller sums, I think we can we can do a lot uh, in this regard if we start on time. I think a good uh, motivator could be um, the exercise uh, under point one when we are, you know, uh, looking at our expenses and we are following them for uh, some uh, amount of time. Um, I think if anyone looks at their expenses and they think uh, about the decrease, let's say, in their income of, uh, you know, 50% or 75% or something like this, and uh, just, you know, take a moment and think, uh, how would you handle that? And what would that do to your lifestyle? So um, I think uh, it's a good uh, motivation maybe to, to think about uh, setting some goals and uh, you know securing yourself financially in the long run uh, for sure and um, it's a good thing as we said uh, that it's much easier to uh, to plan these kind of things and to uh, act uh, on these kind of plans today than, than it was even so some years ago so uh, there's no excuse not, not to start investing both for our long-term uh, financial goals whether it be uh, retirement or uh, whatever, uh, whatever we might uh, want out of life in the in the long term. Yes, I would mention here that obviously um, investing has its risks. We always have to uh, make sure that we educate ourselves and that we have uh, proper information about the products that we would like to use and that uh, we want to invest in. Uh, this is a prerequisite, I would say. And um, um, it is very important that you always check if um, you are um, trading over some platform or you're using some broker, if uh, it's licensed. And just make sure that uh, you know your money is in uh, in good hands because uh, unfortunately um, people hear uh, a lot of things happening with some non-regulated products and stuff like that, and then uh, eventually they have prejudices or they have fear about investing. But uh, one thing about investing is that you need to uh, have at least. I would say uh, basic information covered and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, you are uh, investing via a licensed uh, broker and that they have some tradition behind themselves. Um, it's easy nowadays to check these things. And um, it, as you said, then uh, there is no really barriers to start investing and to, uh, in a way, secure a better financial future. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, if I said earlier that uh, one of the prerequisites is having the financial reserve, but the education is is another one. Uh, that's the the number one rule, or or maybe the the number zero rule in investing is to know what you're investing in. If you don't know what you're investing in, then uh, it's better uh, to 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 even wait a little bit until until we get some info. But yeah. Uh, Today, we have a lot of ways to uh, inform ourselves uh, about investing. Also for free, right? So there is also no barriers to learn if we want to. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Not just uh, to hear, hear uh, some very uh, well-meant uh, tips uh, from friends over coffee. Uh, we need to do a little bit better when it comes to investing. Exactly. So, yeah, hopefully this uh, podcast today is going to help some, some people uh, to get started um, on the track of uh, improving their finances. So if if you can uh, uh, take away uh, uh, any part of, of these five mistakes and uh, apply it to your life, I think uh, in the long term it's going to mean a lot. Yes, we will be very happy if uh, anything that we've said today uh, was helpful and it's going to improve your finances. Um, over the long run. Um, you can always write to us and ask us questions. We will be happy to hear and uh, create more content, podcasts, about blogs, webinars on the topics that you are interested in. 
Uh, you can follow us on our social medias, uh, including uh, YouTube channel, um, Finex International. You can also uh, have a look at uh, all the other uh, media we are on. We are constantly trying to create uh, content which will lead you to better uh, personal finance. And uh, also we are giving really good tips uh, when in regards to investing. Tony, thank you very much. I would also tell them to have a look at your uh, blog, but as the blog is in creation, um, I'm not sure uh, how many of uh, our viewers today can uh, basically get any benefit from that. Maybe you should also start uh, writing in English on your blog uh, for the future so we can uh, send them to your page as well. Yeah, perhaps uh, for the future, but uh, in any case, uh, yeah, I think it was it was fun for me today. And uh, if we helped uh, only a couple of people, I'm very happy with uh, today's podcast. Thank you, Tony. Looking forward to one of our next podcasts together. Thank you for inviting me. Looking forward as well. Bye.